Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. I know many of you, even though you're subscribers to Adobe's Creative Cloud, are Lightroom only users and, even though it's included in your subscription, never touch or rarely touch Photoshop. I know there are a lot of you out there because I often get emails from Lightroom only users who watched a Photoshop how-to video asking me if that thing they just saw in that Photoshop video can be done in Lightroom. Nine times out of ten, it cannot be done in Lightroom. Well, I'm thinking of doing a short series for the Lightroom only users where I demonstrate how they can do a simple task in Photoshop from Lightroom. In today's video, I'll demonstrate how to replace the sky in an image. I mentioned at the top that I'm thinking of making this a short series of videos. If this is something you'd like to see, let me know in the comments below. Now, I mentioned in today's video, we're going to demonstrate how easy it is to use Photoshop to replace a sky when you're working in Lightroom. So I have this image here and I did some basic processing on it and I'm ready to replace the sky in it. Now, to replace the sky, just right click right on the image, go down to Edit In, and then go over to Edit in Adobe Photoshop. In this case, the time I'm making this video, it's Photoshop 2022. So we'll do that, and it will take this image. It is a raw file, but it will open it up into Photoshop proper. And then we want to replace the sky. All you need to do is go up to Edit and then down to Sky Replacement. And when you do that, you'll get this dialog box and it will automatically put in the last sky you used, which may not be the sky you want to use this time. Now, when you want to choose your sky, just click right here and you'll be able to pick from a number of skies that come with Photoshop. These are all down here. I happen to prefer to use a third-party sky called OccuDrone. I'll have a link to those in the description below this video. And for this image, I think maybe like a crystal blue sky might look better. And then you could just click on them and it will swap out the skies for one another until you find a sky that you kind of like. And I'm not going to go through all these. This isn't an OccuDrone um, video. This is a Photoshop video. Let's choose this one only because I want to show you something. Uh, notice how the light of the clouds isn't matching the light of the buildings. Uh, the sun was to camera right, and you could see the clouds are being lit to camera left. All you need to do is flip it. So you just click right there and you could flip it so that it is lining up better. You could shift if it isn't like hitting right at the horizon line, you could shift the edge here and kind of make it sit better at the horizon line there. You could also fade the edge. All that helps you blend it in at the horizon line a little better. You could adjust the brightness, make it brighter or darker to fit the scene. You could make it warmer or cooler. The scale button, if you feel like you need to zoom it in a little bit, move it to the right. Now it will take a second to render. If you need to zoom it out, take it to the left. Unfortunately, if you zoom it out too far, you'll start getting these edges over here. So the default value for the scale slider is 100. So you could just type back in 100 right there and you'll get back to where it was. And lighting mode, you could experiment, try screen, see if it looks better down at the horizon line. Most often multiply seems to work the best. You could mess around with the lighting adjustment as well. Move this around, you'll see how it affects the buildings there. And the color adjustment as well. But you don't have to worry about those too much. You could do that once we get back in Lightroom. Now, what I would recommend you do to save space is just output it to a duplicate layer and then click OK. And when you do that, you'll see you'll have two layers over here, but you don't even have to worry about that. Now, all you need to do is save it. To save it, go up to File and then down to Save. And you'll see in the lower left-hand corner, it's saving it. And once that blue bar is gone, that means it's saved. And then we could quit Photoshop. 
when you quit Photoshop, you'll be back in Lightroom and you'll notice that that image is magically now in Lightroom. So we have two versions of the image, the image without the clouds and the image with the clouds. Then you could come in and adjust it from here if you like. And since uh, Lightroom now has masking for the sky, let's say you wanted to do something else with the sky. You could click on that little masking icon, have it select the sky. And then once it selects the sky, then you could do something here. Let's say we just wanted to warm it up a little bit. Like that. Or maybe we wanted to make it a little more dramatic, add some clarity. So you could see how you could adjust it from this point forward in Lightroom. So that is one easy operation that you could do in Photoshop from Lightroom. So you could do like 90% of your processing in Lightroom and just pop over to Photoshop, go up to that edit, then down to sky replacement, replace the sky, save it, go back into Lightroom, and then you could edit it from that point forward. Now again, I'm thinking of doing a short series where you're doing most of your work in Lightroom and you're just going to pop over to Photoshop to do something very quickly and then come back into Lightroom. If there's anything specific you want me to demonstrate or if there's something you think would be of interest to a lot of people, let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.